Welcome to another episode of Machine Learning Made Simple. Today, I'll be talking about statistical classification and um, giving you an overview of both discriminative and generative kinds of classifications. Now, uh, this video will not be comprehensive uh, mathematical formulation where I go over different papers that uh, break down performances, but rather a brief overview that would hopefully give you the intuition behind the two methods of classification and where they might excel slash fail. I will be linking a whole bunch of really important and what I found to be useful uh, discussions in the description and in the comments below. Feel free to check them out if you decide that that is more important. And as always, a like for the YouTube algorithm goes a long way. Subscribe if you like this kind of content and do leave any thoughts or opinions in the comments below, as well as asking, uh, telling me which other topics you'd like done. So just uh, to like go away, make sure we're on the same page, let's define classification. Essentially, it's just given an input, which is a feature vector i, and uh, a set of possible answers. We want to choose which uh, answer is or which class um, i most likely belongs to. So. This is like the Wikipedia definition. Feel free to read it, but that's basically what it says. Classification is the problem of identifying which set of categories, which is basically our possible answers, in your observation, our I belongs to, on the basis of a training set. Okay, so this is just uh, the additional information that we first train, and then, you know, using that training set, we want to do, use new observations. Anyone familiar with machine learning already is not surprised by this. So I'm not going to read the whole thing out because that doesn't help, but just thought I'll leave it there in case anyone is interested. So next, uh, let's talk about what, what each of these are. So the two, like what they say, are the two types is discriminative and generative classification. So what are these? So this image is basically the best way to describe it, which is that a discriminative model is learning along wait, let me just pull out my pen. So my discriminative model is learning this line. So it's learning what distinguishes the green from the this color, orange. And that is what it learns on. And then obviously we just have to check well, when our new thing falls, we just have to check where does where does our new which side of the line does the new um, member, new input I belong to? Generative classification uh, is not as direct. So this directly uh, compares one to the other. In this case, what we do is we actually create our own, we start to learn wh what it means to be a green and what it means to be an orange. And depending on the, then we check which our new input I, does it belong here or does it belong here? So that, that's what it tries to answer. And that's what this is. This is the contextual form. So discriminative classification, all we're doing is we're directly, this is the important bit, directly tries to maximize the prediction based on the input. That's basically it. So if you were programming it, what you'd say is um, for your for an for a input x, we check what is the probability of P of Y given that input X. And we just do this for every Y, every possible solution, every possible uh, class, you know, green, orange, blue, red, and whichever gets the max value is going to be our classifier. And you might think this seems like how you would classify it. And you'd be correct. And this is how, uh, this is how a lot of, uh, this is how neural networks work. This is how random forests work. A lot of um, SVMs, support vector machines, all of these focus on basically finding the best kind of decision boundary. We're, uh, finding the, uh, basically finding these lines that separates, you know, multiple classes. That's what all of those focus on. And uh, so this again, the decision boundary, which means um, what what separates one from the other. And. So we have, uh, it has been found that uh, uh, in some papers that a discriminative classification actually tends to work better. 
uh, in terms of uh, different values. Uh, in terms of when training, it tends to have a lower error and a higher accuracy. And uh, you know, I will be link in the discussions. I link below. You can always refer to the papers where they talk about this. Uh, there's certainly a lot more nuance, and I will be actually breaking down one of a couple of the papers that go over these topics. So if you're interested in that, uh, be sure to uh, subscribe and hit the bell icon on YouTube so you're always updated when new videos come out. And uh, also follow my Medium, which will be in the dis YouTube description, because Medium is where I can go in depth, actually breaking down the nuances of a paper, which might not be as easy to do in video format. But this is important, that it does give you a higher accuracy when training in general. You know, there's always exceptions. Uh, you have to always look at your problem and then figure out what technique you want to use. And uh, what we have here is basically when we know that there's only n possible classes. So when we we know that any if it's a yes or a no question, then discriminative classification might work very well when everything falls under yes or no. And and uh, but we do have to remember that this requires like we need to have enough samples. We have enough samples. Because uh, remember, this is very training data dependent. So if you don't know what your training data is asking you, you might be in trouble later. And that is a crucial aspect. Next, uh, just a quick example. So this is just helping, uh, helping us figure out, this is just helping you think of that. So if we have every, if we take the information of every mouse cat in human, we can use this information to as a training set. And then, any type of new type of any type a new type of either mouse cat or human is born, we can actually input their biometric information to predict which class they belong to. So here, remember, we're not we're not checking over every possible. Uh, we're not trying to generate new kinds of data. We're just strictly classifying. So here, what is the probability of human given info uh, max probability of mouse given info and probability of cat given info. That is how your classifier would work. So all we do is pick the maximum of these three. Uh, next, let's go down to generative modeling and why that that tends to work very, very well. So generative modeling is actually a what it it does like a step back. Discriminative directly learns here. We're, we're directly learning between the two, while generative is trying to learn. You know, it actually cares about the distribution itself. So the advantage of that comes in when we actually want to create new kinds of distribution. Um, so imagine we were given an imagine we were given a y, and we need to figure out what x works best for it. We can use this, or imagine we're given partially. Imagine we are given a set of x's, x x x, and we are partially given a y plus a set of y's, k number of y's but we need to generate the other y values. Discriminative classification doesn't really help us in this case, or you know, you'd have to really bend over backwards to integrate it. But with generative modeling, you can easily generate the rest of the y's and create you know, likely pairs, which can be very helpful in certain cases, like forecasting analysis. So there, what this does is actually it applies j, um, so this creates the joint distribution and statistics. And then we can use it to classify by essentially just uh, applying the base theorem to that joint distribution. Because remember, in this case, since we're creating joint distributions, we can calculate the prior and we can get the and we can use the prior and the uh, you know the values to get the posterior, which is what our classification would be. And uh, that's, that's why it's called generative modeling, because more than just trying to discriminate between two, uh, you know, two or, you know, between n classes, what we're trying to do is we're trying to generate values of this class. Now, uh, as mentioned, it tends to perform worse, which you can sort of, like, you know, it, it might sort of make sense in strict classification cases, 
because this is doing extra steps, right? We, ca we don't directly calculate P of Y given X. We first calculate the uh, joint probability and then use Bayes' theorem on that to derive it. So that is extra steps. So this does tend to have lower performance and, you know, obviously it does, it's require most, it requires more steps. But in, in, so in pure classification, it might, it tends to fall behind discriminative approach. So why would we use generative modeling? And, well, you know, knife base is the most typically used uh, class, uh, um, spam detection algorithm. So do these email services not want, not care about getting the best results? So what's important to note here is that uh, when we do have uh, generative models, we can, we can keep creating new instances of that class. So think about how useful that is because a spammer isn't always going to keep the same, you know, a spammer isn't always going to use the same format. If it's a format that a discriminative model has seen, it can classify it very well. But what if it's never seen that format? Then, uh, but you know, but if it might fall like, you know, it might fall right here. So a spam detection algorithm can, can, and can still flag it when a discriminative model will not because it will just say along this boundary. And that's kind of what happens in our emails. If you, if you notice a lot of times, like my internship email went to my spam folder from Facebook that too, like Facebook's career services, et cetera, et cetera, because uh, it can often even, you know, it will try to go above and beyond. And I will actually be creating a more thorough video on spam detection, how it works, because I found it to be a very interesting topic. But for now, um, all you should know is that since uh, generative modeling tends to learn over distributions, it tends to have a good performance when it comes to certain things like spam detection, where, where you don't al you're not always guaranteed a fixed kind of data distribution. Spammers will often link images with text inside them. They might, uh, you know, they often do things like, instead of saying Viagra, they'll say this. Viagra. So, you know, these aren't things that a discriminative model might be able to catch as easily. But a generative model, since it's learning, since it focuses on learning the entire distribution, it, it might have a better chance catching this. Now, for the last bit, uh, what I really, this is just the last thing I want to talk about, is that often people tend to think of the two as, you know, discriminative as one way and generative as one way. And hopefully if I've done a good job explaining things to you, you can start to see, you, can, you won't be shocked when I tell you that there's no real need to pick one or the other. You can do both. And think, think about that for a second, because the way these things are designed, you could actually, there's a very smooth transition going from going from generative to discriminative because all you have to do is apply Bayes' theorem. You know, I say all you have to do, but it does require steps, but you, that is the step, oh, that is what you have to do. So there's actually a very smooth, like, you know, you can actually transition from de generative to discriminative. You can use discriminative as a base to train your generators. And that's kind of what GANs or generative adversarial networks are focused on, where you have one generator and you have one discriminator and these guys are fighting each other. So the generator just wants to create, so back to our spam detection example, a generator wants to create the spam that a discriminator cannot, thinks as not spam. So discriminator loses every time it classifies spam as not fam, spam and generator loses every time uh, the spam it generates is classified as spam. So, you, you know, these guys have literally opposite goals. It's like, you know, so, which is why it's called adversarial. And these two are always fighting each other. And in this case, you can see why, you can start to see how this would work. A generative model would, would keep trying to expand its distributions. It would, it would learn more and more about the details. And based on the feedback it gets from the discriminator, it can generate better and better and closer and closer results. And a discriminator, on the other hand, will keep getting more and more training input of different types, and it can use that to, um, you know, really sharpen its values. And typically, uh, the the best case, like in a perfectly balanced one, 
you get 1 by n where n is the number of possible classes for this becomes the probability of each thing so like the spam not spam generator would get so good that uh, the discriminator would have the best chance of just guessing true or false and uh, that's basically how it works this is obviously not a comprehensive video on Gansey also and I will you know be coming up with videos on that so subscribe to that too if there's any other topics you want me to look over please leave them in the comments below if there's something you need me to if there's something I've missed out or you think uh, you know I haven't explained as well do let me know as well any feedback really helps a content creator like me because it helps me create better content uh, the, uh, lastly you know these are all the different areas I might my medium where I break down papers my YouTube which you know I'm trying to get better with in making videos uh, my LinkedIn my Twitter uh, email and uh, where's my Instagram it should have been here somewhere but uh, I'll, I'll be sure to link that as well and it, it should be linked in the description below but all these uh, you can all these social media platforms uh, you can connect with me on them so that we can talk we can discuss different ideas I am looking for animators and video creators so if you know anyone that might be helpful uh, but that's about it thank you so much for watching have a good day and lastly uh, if you're looking to invest into stocks you know my Robinhood uh, referral link is given here be sure to use that you know that uh, when you it's basically a free stock when you open your account so there's no risk to you this is basically free money you're losing out uh, you know on stocks I've made great returns and I'll make a video on that too but I'm not a stock market guru all I'm saying is that it's free money man why do you want to miss out on that that's pretty much it thank you have a good day